Good morning, and welcome to the Chetwin Shared Ministry Service. My name is Carmen Little, a lay leader in the congregation, and it is my pleasure to be able to bring worship into your home. Jesus' resurrection invites us to a resilient, specially blessed faith that does not end with doubt or fear or suffering. Our readings today will proclaim that life is our ultimate end and God's aim for us. And we may rejoice even now in this living hope. Come, let us worship the Lord with our whole hearts. We begin our service with the hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. We continue now with the lighting of our candles. We give thanks for the light of hope, unrelenting and inexplicable. Our hope in Christ shines on. We give thanks for the light of peace, strong and unafraid. The peace of Christ lights our way. We give thanks for the light of joy, persistent and unpredictable. The joy of Christ brightens our lives. We give thanks for the light of love, bright and holy. The love of Christ comforts and challenges. Now let us light the Christ candle as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Thank you, God, for your light in this world through Jesus Christ. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We continue with our call to worship. The joy of the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, is with us. We rejoice in the blessing that God has poured into our lives. Even though we hear words of doubt, we are called to believe. Even though the world would draw us back again into darkness, we focus on the light. Thanks be to Christ who gives us the victory. 
Alleluia. Amen. We continue now with our opening prayer. We pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our prayer of confession, we pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Do not fear, dear friends. Jesus is among us offering us new life and hope. Nothing can prevent God's love for us. Rejoice, for you have been made new in Christ. Amen. Let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. May the peace of Christ be always with you. We continue now with our hymn, what a friend we have in Jesus. Our service continues now with our prayer of illumination. We pray. God of sacred texts, speak powerfully to us today through what is written in your holy scripture. Help us hear the witnesses to Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, and to the promises of life in his name. Amen. Our first reading this morning is Psalm number 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. 
my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The Word of God for the people of God. Our next reading is taken from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Our New Testament reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Glory to God in the highest. Sing glory to God. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Our Gospel reading this morning is taken from John chapter 20. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. 
But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach your hand and put it into my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Easter of 2020 was like none other in my life, and I expect you can relate. I did not go to church physically on Easter Sunday. Instead, I had the privilege of watching two Lutheran pastors, our BC Synod Bishop, Bishop Gregg, and other support crew deliver a pre-recorded Easter service on YouTube from the comfort of my couch. The COVID-19 crisis certainly made a difference in our Easter celebrations. But I wonder if Easter will make a difference in how we think about, feel about, and experience life during a pandemic. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The Apostle Peter took up his pen many, many years ago and set himself to write something encouraging to the beleaguered Christians of that day. They were, quite frankly, being abused. It was a very anti-Christian society. The question raised for these believers is the same that we could pose for ourselves today. How can we have the power of soul in times of great stress and anxiety, not just to get through the day, but to rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy? Peter wrote, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be, be, be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The resurrection makes a difference in our lives. It gives us a new birth into a living hope. Not empty hope, not dead hope, but hope that is alive in us. Hope in biblical, per biblical perspective. It's not a positive attitude or wishful thinking. Rather, it's solid confidence in the future in God's future. So, for example, I hope that by staying at home, practicing social distancing, and energetic hand washing, it will not, I will not get COVID-19. But this isn't what biblical hope is all about. Biblical hope is the solid assurance that no matter what happens to me in this life, my future is in God's hands and He will raise me to a new life. Why can I have such confident hope? because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, demonstrating that death has been defeated through the cross and resurrection. Is this kind of hope relevant to people who are in the midst of a pandemic? I think so. Those to whom Peter was writing were not in a situation exactly like ours, but they were going through difficulties of their own. 
they had, in Peter's words, to suffer various trials as they were being tested by fire. We don't know exactly what the recipients of 1 Peter were experiencing, but we do know that it was upsetting and painful. Yet, in their suffering, they had hope. Confident hope, abiding hope, living hope. Why? Because they were an Easter people. They were people of the resurrection, and that made all the difference in the world. We are an Easter people. We are people of the resurrection, and that makes all the difference in the world. What is living hope? It is fertile, fruitful, productive hope. Living hope is hope that has power and produces changes in life. That is what living means in Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is living and effective. Christian hope is strong confidence in God, which has power to produce changes in how we live. In verse 3 of today's second reading, Peter writes, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That is, our hope arises from being born anew, and this new birth comes in some sense through Jesus' resurrection. What do you hope in, and what are you hoping for? For many of us, we have a list of things we hope will happen, from the mundane, out-of-control things, like hoping the weather will be nice, all the way to important things, such as hoping we will be able to hug our family and friends again, and very soon. We hope for all sorts of things. Hope is a good motivator. Without hope, what point is there in going on? Many who suffer from depression are found to describe their situation as feeling hopeless. Hope provides meaning and hope is a helpful thing towards success. God gives us hope, but not just any hope. He gives us living hope. And in it, we have ultimate success. In living hope, we have Christ's victory. One of the greatest surprises about humanity is how much we can survive if we just have one thing, hope. This means that whatever is happening now, we can endure it. Not only can we endure it, we can endure it with joy. Not a joy that lives in denial, but a joy that sees the big picture and brings hope to today. We can have a living hope even in the middle of trials. We've been given a hope that while we cannot see it in its fullness, it bursts into our lives in such real and tangible ways that we can't help but feel joy because we are an Easter people. We have been saved. Our faith and trust in Christ and all he has done, is doing, and will do creates in us this incredible joy and peace that remakes our very being. Peter's writing doesn't call us to be unrealistic about life. We're not to pretend that we don't really have trials and difficulties, but we're not to make them the focus of our attention. Instead, we're to focus on living hope. Our living hope comes from God. Our hope does not come from other people. It doesn't come from circumstances. It doesn't come, in fact, from anything in this created world, and therefore it cannot fail. Our living hope comes to us from God the Father himself, one that is based on his abundant mercy, one to which he has caused us to be born again, one that has been proven to be absolutely, unfailingly sure to us by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Our hope is as sure and as certain and in us failing as a living as the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given this hope to us. Jesus saved us through the cross and resurrection. That was a one-time event that covers all of eternity. But through faith, working in our lives, Jesus continues to save us every day, and one joyous day, Jesus will return to bring salvation in its fullness. We are saved, we are being saved, and we will be saved. He is risen, he is our living hope, he is making all things new. He is coming again. We continue now with the prayers for our community. Let us pray. Let us pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety. For all who are affected by COVID-19 through illness or isolation or anxiety, 
that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they may make wise decisions. Lord, graciously hear us. For doctors, nurses, and medical researchers, that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, graciously hear us. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Be with us now, God, as we unite our voices and recite the prayer that Jesus teaches all disciples, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. When we think of our offering, it's usually in the context of money. During this time of COVID-19, we now have the opportunity to look at what else we can offer. God sees the big picture. Throughout all time, he knows that our offerings through other means, such as hospitality, visiting the sick or elderly, are important. During this time of self-isolation and social distancing, I encourage you to think of new and innovative ways to use the talents and gifts he has given you to bring his kingdom forth. Listen to him. Learn what they are and use them. Our closing hymn is Amazing Grace. In great mercy, God has given us a new birth into a living hope, for it is the risen Christ who stands in our midst and says, Peace be with you. We go forth to walk the path of new life and living hope, and may the peace of the risen Christ be with us. Amen. Our service concludes with our threefold Amen.